Welcome to another video. I am the Starman and I'm here in the lockdown garden and uh, it's a really sunny day today. Hey, uh, early February, but I'll tell you what, can you hear those birds? I think we've got the early signs of spring. Anyway, in this video, I want to show you something. Now, this is just a very quick video just to show you this new mount that I've got for putting a telescope on and taking pictures of the night sky. Check this out. Now then, check this out. Now this is just a quick look in this video because um, I've not had this very long and I haven't had a chance to use it. This is a German equatorial telescope mount and in particular this model is a sky watcher. If I come around this side a sky watcher any q6 which is a really really good telescope mount it's the top of the range i think it's the top one that they do this is for putting a very big tele you can put a very big telescope on this this is what you need if you want to do serious astrophotography and just down there is the hand controller can you see that's the hand controller that you would use to control the telescope to tell it to look for certain things in the night sky that you want to photograph now this telescope mount here has been very kindly lent to me by my astronomical society uh, badass blackpool and district astronomical society and this is the sort of thing that you can get if you join a society because they have equipment now we haven't met for over a year because of you know what so that means a lot of the equipment that they have in the society for star parties and things like that can go out on loan as long as they trust you i don't expect you to join an astronomical society and for them to just suddenly start lending you um very expensive equipment like this mount here i think these are about 1200 new now they do have a new model out now than this one this is uh, a few years old now but it is the top of the range in equatorial mounts that Skywatcher make. Now these come in all different types. You can get fancy ones, really fancy. You can pay abs you can pay fortunes for one of these things. You can get different brands and they have different kind of fancy designs, but they're all essentially the same. They're all based on the German equatorial mount system. Now I'll try and show you around it and I'll try and show you how it works, but I will do a future video using this mount and a different type of mount, another popular mount, and I'll show you how the two work. Look at that blue sky up there, isn't it amazing? Anyway, very quickly, this is an equatorial mount, so it has a polar scope down here, which needs to be pointed towards the North Star. So you need to make sure the mount is orientated towards the North Star, and you align it using this polar scope. And once you've done that, you can then put a telescope onto here, connect a telescope onto there and you then need to do a star alignment using this hand controller so that you so that the mount knows where it is and once that's been done you can then use the telescope to look at stuff or maybe you'll want to photograph something you know use a long exposure that you can do that now can you see how it's on an angle here what you would do is you would get your rough latitude on this degree scale here now i'm at 53 degrees so this is set to about 53 degrees but you still do need to precisely polar alignment as well because you're never going to get it exact just by looking at this scale here so once you've got that to your latitude you can then roughly align the mount towards north and then you can line up polaris in this here and then it's all set up then there's two axes here this axis here is what's known as the ra right ascension axis and this goes round i'll show you can you see can you see how that goes round like that this is the right ascension this is the only axis that the mount will use to track a star if the polar alignment is correct if i unlock this now so this axis here where the telescope connects to is known as the declination axis so this is basically your up and down, whereas the RA is your left and right. So th this would move up and down the sky, this one. If your polar alignment isn't quite right or you're using an auto glider, it may need to use this axis if it's not quite perfectly aligned. 
Yeah, so what I'm going to do today, it's quite a nice day today, even though it's really cold. I'm going to have a practice setting this mount up and then I'll be able to have a go at it maybe later on tonight because it's going to be clear for the next few nights. Might try the uh, Orion Nebula or something like that with it. But I'll come back with another video putting this mount up against another very popular mount, which is known as an Alt Azimuth mount. And then I'll do a, a proper video on it at another time. But this is the type of mount that you really need if you're going to do serious astronomy even if it's just visual astronomy you know you want to use a really big telescope or certainly if you're doing astrophotography and the reason for that is it's an equatorial mount if you're not using an equatorial mount for astrophotography you're very limited in the exposures you can do you can't do really at long exposure and it's all to do with the way the mount works this mount the equatorial mount it tracks the sky in right ascension so it tracks the stars perfectly and keeps the star the same way up from one side of the sky to the other or, or should I say the nebula from one side of the sky to the other side an alt azimuth mount will not do that there will be field rotation in an alt azimuth mount I'll explain all that in another video anyway when I get hold of one of those mounts so anyway look out for that video when it comes and uh, I'll hopefully be bringing that very soon and uh, if you like this video hit the like button and also hit subscribe and tick the bell for notifications of new videos and I will see you again next time